various services. Based on the overwhelming evidence from both the public and the private sector, I ask that the city declare a housing emergency. I motion for the city attorney to prepare an agenda item declaring that a housing emergency exists which is so grave as, 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 that, is, that it constitutes a serious menace to the general public and instituting measures that, that are necessary and proper to eliminate the existing housing emergency. The city attorney should expeditiously prepare an ordinance meeting all the requirements of Florida statute section 166.043 so that a final vote can be held by this city council no later than August 23rd, 22, along with the language to, present it, to be presented on the city ballot in order to meet the deadline provided by the supervisor elections for the November ballot. An attachment document has been prepared by, by, by legal advisors uh, that I've, 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 uh, that I've uh, come across who've given me the information uh, to lay out requirements needed to implement for the review for the ordinance. Second. Is this to be prepared by city legal or city council attorney? No, city legal, sir. I, I think we understand it. City legal, I've already given a document that they don't have to do a lot of legwork, but I need to review it and bring something back for the, so to, to, for the uh, ballot just, for the voters. Just wanting to be specific on that. We have a, mo we have a motion made by Councilman Goods, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. Any discussion? Yes. Please, any discussion? Councilman Maniscalco. Uh, first of all, Councilman Goods, thank you for your leadership. I know it's not easy, nothing is, but I think we've, we've heard the cries of the people and uh, we need to take action. Uh, it's up to us as a city council, it's up to us as decent human beings to help one another in whatever capacity that we can. You have come here week after week, people have been suffering for a long time, call it a victim of our success, whatever it is, we cannot allow more and more people to be on the street facing eviction. It could affect anybody, we could be there. It could, you know, anybody's one paycheck away, one disaster away. And we need to do whatever it takes, because that's what we were elected to do, to help the people that are asking for help. So, thank you. Councilwoman Hurtak. Um, I 100% support this. Um, it should go on the ballot. Uh, we're, we're doing all of these things. Uh, people are coming to us, they're asking for help, and um, we are, we're being told that there's not a lot we can do, but we can, we can put it on the ballot. We can leave it up to the people. That's what everyone is asking us to do. They're asking us to help. And, and uh, as I said before, I've realized how I thought I could get things done faster here and that's just not the nature of government, but the nature of the, the people, people power is a little bit different. So um, we are still working incredibly hard and you know it and we're working as partners to do everything we can in the background and it's not gonna stop me from supporting more money in the budget to help people where they are right now. But the people want this done and I, I don't see a way, I, I don't see a reason to not support that. So thank you all. Thank you, Councilman Goods, for um, all your hard work on this. Councilman Carlson. Yes, <clears throat> thank you. Um, uh, I think it was three years ago I um, made a motion to spend a minimum 30% of the CRA money on affordable housing. I've supported every affordable housing pr initiative that we put forward. I've supported uh, rent toll assistance. Um, I created Tampa Scorecard three years ago to point out the problems of poverty and the, and the, the disparities uh, between men and women and blacks and whites and other issues so that we could try to address these issues. Um, but I am, uh, I am not in any way going to support putting anything on the ballot. Um, it is very clear that this is a, uh, a short-term initiative. I've lived in cities that have rent control and if, if the state allowed us to have uh, longer rent control and, and do this in a different way, that's fine. In, in philosophy, uh, to people who haven't studied the the or the um, state legislation, rent control sounds like a good idea. Uh, but basic economics 101, they're going to be thou if this goes in effect, they're going to be thousands of people who will be uh, displaced when this starts. And it's not going to be on on my shoulders that we displace people because what will happen is that the landlords will uh, double or triple the rent, expecting that this this rent control will last at least a year, or that it might be renewed. I, what I would rather we do is, like I propose with um, Representative Hart, is that we and the pe folks in the room, let's lobby Tallahassee to change those state laws. Let's create, let's take away the preemptions and allow 
the city to do the things we do. We're working very hard, and, and we've been working closely with many of the folks in the in the in the in this room uh, to try to change. Uh, the zoning and other policies to try to move these issues forward. As I said, we had eight years of neglect, not just neglect, but going backwards. We had an administration that took um, benches out of, out of parks and tore down affordable housing and, and brutally attacked uh, poor people. And, uh, and we've tried to change that in the last three years, but it's really hard to change these things immediately. This, the, the reason why I'm gonna vote against this and not support it at all uh, is because I don't believe that we should pass something that will make the problem worse and hurt people when we should be passing initiatives to help people. Just because somebody in Tallahassee or somebody out of state wants this, and uh, it's obvious that somebody wants this because they want Tampa to be the guinea pig so that we can challenge the state law. Instead of doing that, let's run an advocacy campaign to get Tallahassee to change the law. Let's not spend hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars of, of this city's taxpayer monies and other cities' taxpayers' money so that we can do an end run to try to change the state law. Let's just go straight to Tallahassee and change the law instead. Uh, this is not the way to do it. It's going to, it's money that, and time that we should have spent to try to help people with the real problem. And I'm, I, when, when thousands of people are pushed out because landlords are doubling or tripling rates, um, I, I, I don't want to say I told you so then, but I will, I will cry along with you because this will have hurt them so badly. Thank you. Councilman Miranda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I've heard both sides of the issue. Certainly, uh, they're both valid. Uh, when you look at uh, money well spent, I earlier said I don't mind falling. I just worry about the landing. Lawsuits are won and lost. So a lawsuit to me doesn't worry me unless I lose it. And this city has just been, or going to pay about a million and a half to a million three quarters, something that we voted on four or five years ago based on another city's ordinance. And we lost. We didn't lose, they lose. The problem is our, our uh, ordinance that we wrote mirrors that city's. So what do you think, we're gonna win that one? Of course not. So it's better off selling it, uh, selling it, settle, settle the, the lawsuit. However, l l let me go back. There, there's certainly, something's gotta trigger those that really have the responsibility for doing this. And in this case, uh, you're on one side or the other. So when, when you look at an ordinance, if it comes from the city, but the city really doesn't have the whole authority, it comes from a higher up, another government. And I'm not trying to pinpoint another government, but the reality is that when you are a city, you're not part of the state government. The county is part of the state government, not the city. So when you look at these things, the monies that come in, I heard people come to the mic today and say, well, take money from this account, take money from that account. And the problem with taking money from those accounts is that those are enterprise funds that you cannot use for anything else other than for that unit of government that creates their own money to make their own payroll, to pay their own taxes, to pay their own insurance, to pay their own bond services. So you can't take that money to do what you want to do with it because it's bonded out. And if you use that money and as soon as they hear about it, your interest rate's going to go up in the bonding market. So what are you gaining? You're getting a net loss, not a net gain. So we borrow money just like everybody else. So these are the things that I'm, I'm looking at. However, all that being said, I don't like to walk any fence because you're going to slip and fall. I don't care who you are when you walk fences. So I'm looking at this as saying, just maybe this is a wake up call to another government that we've shaken the tree enough so that the acorns finally fall. So maybe I should support this, even though I know I'm gonna get a lawsuit and I know I'm gonna lose. I know that. However, the shaking of another government is where it comes from, and maybe you can't lose there if we lose here. So therefore, although I agree with Mr. Carlson and what he said in a lot of the areas that he talked about, I wanna shake that tree because this money's gonna run out no matter what happens. And if they run out, what happens, where's you gonna kick the can to? The can will be worn out, been kicked so many times. So you have to have an ending somewhere in some life. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, we're all born with an expir expiration date. We just don't know which one it is on a humanity side. But this can, doesn't have an expiration date because we kicked it so many times, it's worn off. 
not us, the whole government's process that we've been through. So I'm going to support this, even though I believe we're going to lose. And you go say, how can you do that? Because I'm looking at the end result, not the beginning. You know, you don't win every sport game by throwing a touchdown. Somewhere along the line, you've got to kick a field goal. And guess what? It's got to go in between the two goal posts. And that's not guaranteed. Neither is this. So we're not in the fourth quarter. We've been on double overtime. And we still don't know the results. Because this is an ever-ending thing that possibly may never end. It may get better. But I don't think it'll ever end. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And Councilman may Vieira. I Chair? Councilman Vieira. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Um, and, and pardon, uh, again, I have COVID, so my mind isn't working as well as it usually does. You know, um, a, a lot of good points made on this issue. Um, I, I think that all seven of us share a heart for affordable housing and whatnot. Um, I'll, I'll be, in short, I'll be vote, voting to move this forward. And yes, I have some questions from legal, um, particularly on one issue, um, on, on the number of households this will affect. Um, that That is, uh, I, I don't want to overpromise. And, and, and that's something that really, really bothers me um, uh, as an elected official is, is, is a general principle, uh, the idea of overpromising to people. Because there's ways that we can do things right here, right now. This could be one of them. So I certainly think that's certainly something that's worth scrutiny. Um, I, I, Councilman Carlson, um, his words, I, I just uh, coming in his defense, because I know I've been on the, the six to one sometimes myself, and it it, uh, it sometimes takes a lot to do the one on, on a six to one vote. And uh, he's always had a stellar record on affordable housing. Um, so I, I, again, I think that we're all very, very united on the end, maybe disagree just a little bit on the means, but just uh, uh, in, in that regard for that perspective vote. Uh, thank you for hearing my rambling thoughts. Thank you. Since this is directed to legal, if I could just let council be aware of some things that we're gonna have to deal with that are practical. Um, I, first of all, I appreciate Councilman Gears putting this together. It looks to be largely based on a similar measure that Orange County took, I think, uh, earlier this week. Um, well, it came from, uh, it's, it's the different, different attorneys from different agencies that came up with graphics. But, it, the, but the, the, the outline of it is very, very similar to what I think Orange County just moved earlier this week. Um, we obviously will have to look at this. I mean, it needs to be tailored toward the city of Tampa, and that takes a bit of time. And also, we need to verify the findings that are being made in this to make sure that they're accurate. Uh, because the statute does require that we make findings as a basis for declaring a state of emergency for the housing crisis. We also need to make findings in the proposed ordinance that this will be a measure that will address that crisis. So those are the two things. One of the things that, and just so the council's aware, that we're lacking that Orange County has, which is the only other government we're aware of in Florida that is moving forward in the same direction as this body is, as Orange County has, had, has done a housing study. Um, so they did have analysis and facts uh, on which to rely. Also, Orange County is a county government, somewhat to Mr. Miranda's point, which encompasses the entire Orange County area. So you're dealing with everyone. I'm not saying that you don't have the authority to do it within the city of Tampa, but I do want to point out that our analysis may be different because we are a city and we're only a fraction, about a quarter of the entire population of Hillsborough County. And a lot of the apartments a lot of the folks that are impacted by real increases are in unincorporated Hillsborough County and anything that you all would do would not have an impact on that. That needs to be made abundantly clear, I think, to folks. So it's a different, we're a different animal. This is a different uh, type of thing. The other thing I want to make sure council is aware of is that to put all this together, given the time frame to get it on the November ballot is very, it's extremely tight. August 23rd is the deadline to get anything to the supervisor's elections office um, this has to be done by ordinance under Florida law. There has to be a minimum of 10 days between first and second reading. You have to have two readings of an ordinance in the state of Florida. So I, I just want to warn council, this is complicated. There's a lot of moving parts and this may be very difficult to put together that time frame. Well, let, let me say this, Mr. Morris, and I, I appreciate you, I respect you, I have many, but you know, you, you always been up, up front with me yeah. and I appreciate you for doing that. 
but we are in a situation here now. We have a, a attorney's office that's having attorneys. We got, we 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 outsource attorney other firms do whatever whatever. So to me, I, with all due respect, I don't want to hear those excuses. I just want to see us be able to move because the people are hurting. When I go to a Popeyes on yesterday, the whole crew in Popeyes is talking about their apartment complex now. I'm not going to mention the name right now. They've just raised their rent, and these people got to be out. Then I go, and, I, and last week I voted on an issue here, you know, and it, it, it was the right thing to vote on because it was legal. But in my heart, it was wrong. When I got students right now, parents are calling me, my kid can't go to school this year because the seniors, the upperclassmen, are going to be moving back into the dorm. And now those freshmen can't go to school because those parents can't afford to pay for housing. But then I voted on something that I've got luxury uh, student housing going up at, at places. And how does that look? The people say, you voted on that. And I just explain why I voted on that, which I had no problem with doing that. But when I hear these cases, and I don't know how many people in this diocese have ever gone hungry, whoever parents have been out of work and your life has been cut off for a couple of days because your mom and dad, that happened to me. I'm not, and I, I said, I would never, guess what, me and my brother, we got to make sure we had, got a job. Because my dad got laid off because of his back, and my mom was sick. So I've had my lights turned off. I've gone a week without eating and saying, you know, man, we're so hungry. So I understand what some of these people are talking about. So that's why I have to do what I have to do. And it may not be seen when other people say, oh, he's, you know, he's, again, that angry black man, he's just, no, 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 I'm doing it because I understand what some of these people are talking about, what they're going through. And if you never experienced something, you don't know. But I've experienced those things. So it's the passion in me that makes me do this. And I just can't sit up here and be the representative of District 5. And my district is multifaceted. I got rich people, poor people, middle class. I have alcoholics, drug I have everybody. But I have 53% that is counting on me all the time. That all the time they're counting on me. So I'm sorry. You know, some people are going to be upset. But so be it. We get sued all the time. I be sued. So it doesn't really matter. Let's get the job done. So do what we have to do to get it back here. We can and get the job done. That's what the people want us to do. But again, I respect you, sir. No, I, I appreciate that. And I'm not saying that the legal department is not going to work on this and try to move it as quickly as we can. I'm just trying to make council aware of the time frames. And there are steps that would need to be done, and there's an analysis, and that just just wanted you to go over there. Councilman Brand, thank you. And, 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 and furthermore, to, to keep on on that, that can item, there's a difference between affordable housing and housing that's affordable. That's right. So I'm just throwing it out so you can figure it out. And there is a difference. So what, what I'm saying is the only way to get out of this thing is to build houses that are affordable. So how do you do that? By what did we ask last week to find out how many lots we have and what it takes to build and what type of housing you can build in those lots? Because you have to lower the cost. You just can't say, here, go build them. And then you can't afford to pay for them. So what did we gain there? Eviction again? And then you got to look at another thing. When you build something that's affordable, no matter what you call it, what are you going to do with raising electrical stuff? What are you going to do with other things? You have to have, not only for those that right now can't afford to rent, not only for those that can't afford to pay, but what are you doing for the environment? I heard today all the environmentalists speak, and guess what? I'm not an environmentalist, and I do more for the environment than anybody sit on that stand today and speak about it, because I've done every damn thing of it. And I sit here, and I listen to these people talk to me, and I'm saying, don't ask what the government can do for you. Ask what you can do for the government to satisfy things. And you know what? No one says that. And you threaten me with a loss of election? You know, you can't win every ball game. You can't win every football game. You can't win any basketball game. But you can't lose them all either. So a threat to me means I come from the same neighborhood Goose does. People that talk don't bother me. The silent ones are the ones that are going to whip on you. That's what I learned in the neighborhood. So the talkers, they just love to talk. The doers don't say much, but they do hurt you. So what I'm trying to say is live up to the responsibilities that we all have. Look at yourself first in the mirror and then follow what is right for the people. And that's all I'm asking. But going back again, you've got to have solar in your houses. Show me how many environmentalists got solar. You've got to drive different automobiles. Show me how many of them have that. You gotta have no grass or little grass. Show me how many have that. 
not too many. So I'm listening to all this, and inside I tell myself, what a wonderful world. They're asking me to do something that they themselves don't do. And I love that. But this is a different animal that we're here. Like I said earlier, I don't like to lose if I know I'm going to lose. So what I'm trying to say is, not trying to say, I've already said it twice. If it takes a loss to shake up another government to do something, then the loss is worth it. And that's all I'm saying. Thank you. Councilwoman Hertak. Um, and I, I'm trying to sort of make a calendar here, but um, I'm happy to also, uh, I, th I think if we need to have a separate session uh, to approve in a first draft so that we can get the second draft done, I am happy to clear my calendar and I'm sure that several other members of council will do that. We'll, we'll uh, have, we have all of these lawyers that are sitting in retainer, let's use them. We, we, whatever it takes to get this on the ballot. Councilman Carlson. Yeah, as I, as I said and I explained why, I'm going to vote against this because I think it will hurt more people than it will help. Um, uh, there are a lot of other initiatives that we can do instead that can hurt people, and I hope we'll continue with those. Uh, but the um, – and, and, and I don't mind being six to one on it um, because philosophically it, I think it's wrong. But um, uh, if we're going to do it, um, the, the, the effect of the – um, the rent increases is happening right now. And if we wait until March, the solution would not go into effect until after that. And, and some economists are predicting a recession by then anyway. We need to do something that will help people now. Even this would go on November ballot. Um, the, uh, the other thing is that in November, we have a better representation of the voting public. In March, we have very few people coming out to vote. And it needs to be to be fair to it. It needs to have a, a larger representation of the public. Um, so, uh, what I would recommend, uh, Councilmember Goods, is as soon as this passes, like I said, I'm going to vote against it, but it sounds like it will pass. I'm happy to support um, a, a follow-up motion to go ahead and schedule the public hearings. And if, as Councilmember Hertek said, we have to schedule an additional one, okay with that. But we we have to get this. If we're going to do this, we have to get it on the November ballot. And the city attorney has already told us that there's a list of, what is it, 30 law firms that we can draw from. Uh, one of them, I think, that's on the list has two former city attorneys. Um, if we started today, we could um, start to get them rolling on trying to get this in. Again, I'm not in favor of it, but if we're going to do it, I think it needs to be on the November ballot, and we should make the decisions today to schedule to put it on the November ballot. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilman Miranda has lived in public housing. I have lived in public housing, so we know what it's like to be poor. This, ladies and gentlemen, is bigger than the city of Tampa. We need Hillsborough County. We need the help of the state of Florida. We had a representative here <coughs> asking us to do something when Tallahassee themselves preempt us from being able to do these sort of things. Affordable housing. We are preempted by the state of Florida. To Council Miranda's point, let's shake up that tree. Let's do some earth shaking. But unless we get the help of Hillsborough County and the state of Florida, we're working on it. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, I guarantee people in Tallahassee, 20 to each of us, are watching this right now and they got pen to paper. We're going to stop this. We're going to preempt this. We have a great lawyer team. And it's been proven. We got five lawyers here that are on top 100 in the state of Florida. And municipal lawyers. They can fight the fight. We can shake the tree. We've got Rome Yard. We've got properties where the old Army Navy used to be. Affordable workforce housing is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry it's not coming fast enough. The city of Tampa is doing its part. But the for now, right now, right here,